Good evening, and welcome to another exciting episode of Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. Oh, I felt very... Ooh, ooh, oh, that was, that little, was a lot. A little Michael like, Palin there. It just like hit me fast. here. I was like, woo! Ooh, came at it. I know. Like, it was exciting. It's been a good day. It's been, ex it's been an exciting it's day. It's been an real. exciting day. And the conversation before was just as exciting. Oh, it was riveting. <laughs> riveting. <laughs> Hello, I'm, I'm your host, Dallas Kip, and with us today is Mr. Will Schick. As hey guys, usual. as usual, as always here. I'm turning always. my light. The ever-present, effervescent. There you go. Ever clever. No, you gotta. No. No. Gotta you messed it up. You messed it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my light and just uh. And just blow start up, painting. Blow out the camera. Uh, we are painting our rockets and Groots. You're painting a. You're painting a Groot. I'm painting a rocket. Very specifically. Very specifically. Um, these guys are coming out. Josh well, Wynn, get the microphone. March 13th? 13th. 13th of March, along with Star Lord. Star Lord. Who we Rocky painted Man. last week. So, March 13th. So, we're going to be painting them up today and talking about them and just having a good time, as usual. Uh, philosophy of painting, like trajectory of painting, and just uh, motivational painting. Motivational so, painting. That's the class I want to go to. Motivational painting. I can motivate teach you by painting. I can teach that class. You could paint. You could. So, let's get started. Um, I've base coated Ooh. my, I went in and base coated my Groot with an airbrush because I had it going. Um, you don't need an airbrush. You could just put paint directly on. I did mine with just a brush. Here it is. Oh, goodbye rocket. I don't know if that came through. Josh yeah, isn't even on my different. camera. It doesn't matter. Just, just, no, it's fine. I know. I just showed my Groot. I was like, look, I, I base coated this with a brush. It's possible, but you missed it. Where's Where'd you go, fun? Josh? I was so trying, to, I was trying to help on him out. And now I'm going to highlight him and then um, do some glazes and stuff to bring him all together. That's my goal with my guy. What about your rocket? Uh, I did not. Do you have a goal? <clears throat> my goal is to try to finish him before I'm forced to stop painting again at the whims of Josh. Whims. But yeah, I'm. I'm just going to approach. Like I'm just trying to do. This is my first rocket. Oh, he's my very first. Um, so I'm just shooting for a very like, what I would call traditional like studio scheme ish rocket. Um, so we're doing like brown grays for the fur to get that like raccoon going on. I might add some banding to him, you know, just for the funsies on the tail. And I'll do the orange jumpsuit, and then I got to figure out how I'm going to paint this BFG, this big old gun. It does have banding sculpted on the tail. Yeah, well, it's got like the yeah, it's got the fur like the fur kind of like differentiates where the different banding would go. Mm -hmm. So that'll kind of help guide me, so I don't have to eyeball it too much. But yeah, I just I want to get a I want to get a nice good rocket going so I can add him to my Star Lord, and then I got to finish my Groot. So I guess I did kind of have some prep work because while well, I was painting Groot, I started painting the uh, the little Groot root that Rocket's standing on so that it would match. Because I didn't want my Groot root to not look like my Groot, because that'd be weird. Yeah, I <laughs> so painted I, mine at the same time, too, to get that make yep. sure they're tied together. So I kind of did that at the same time. I'm not done with it, because I'm not done with Groot, but it's like in progress. So it should be pretty cool. And then I'll have this little deadly duel ready to go. It'll be great. They're a fun little duo. They are a very, very potent little team. A TM, if you will. I liked uh, I liked playing them in playtests, so they're a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. It was it was interesting. Like when we were kind of designing them and stuff, there was some discussion given to well, what if they were just one character, but both of them were on the same base? And um, <clears throat> I think that idea had merit, but my my issue with it, or the reason that it didn't like really resonate in my head was like there's so many great storylines and comics and stuff where Rocket and Groot are not together like we think of them as being like kind of an inseparable pair but if you go through a lot of the cosmic storylines and especially some of the more current storylines these two aren't always right next to each other like they do go on adventures together they have they have falling outs they join different teams and they kind of like get into their own trouble so I felt <clears throat> I really felt like giving people the opportunity to do that with their teams in Crisis Protocol was really important because I wanted the characters to kind of like be really great together but also to be able to kind of split up and go on their own solo adventures too. 
So it wasn't always the, the same like pair. Um, and then from a design perspective, it allows us to like really kind of delve into each character and do some fun things. And I don't know, it worked. I could certainly see another version of them someday, like who knows when, where it's like they're just together. Together on one base. Yeah, like mount, put Rocket on Groot's shoulder or something and just make them like a true single package. But for this one, at least, I, I wanted to be able to like let both the characters kind of have their own breathing room and and let people explore and play with them. You know, maybe maybe you love Rocket, but you're not a huge Groot fan, or vice versa. I don't know. You know, it's your choice. You tell the stories you want to tell. You tell the story. You, you do. You do. You. No one's going to tell you you did it wrong. That's not how it's going to happen. Like what do the watcher? He's not going to tell you that you did it wrong. He's just going to watch. Isn't that right, Josh? I'm just watching. Yeah, see? There we, you go, see? We should call, we should maybe, like, that should be Josh's new nickname. He could be our Owatu. He doesn't do anything, he just watches. I'm fine with it. And he sees, like, disaster approaching, and he's like, mm, but my mm. job is just to watch, so I must just watch. I get accused of not doing anything at the office anyways. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Kick up, kick up the little sad trumpets. Chat knows. Chat, no. Chat, knows. Chat sees through you. They see through your lies. Your hideous, hideous lies. Gosh, Josh. This never ends with you. <clears throat> never ends. So Dallas, do you begin, so you obviously base coded. Do you start with highlights or shadows? How do you usually start? So, <clears throat> it all depends on the character and all depends on the material. Uh, for something like trees and bark and wood texture, what I like to do is I like to give a good base coat. And what I did is I used kind of three different colors to get a couple different tones over Groot because like he's kind of one thing, right? He doesn't have, you know, it's not like he has a suit, he doesn't have a vest and a pouch and you know, a plasma rifle, like some people over there. Look, some people just know how to come to a fight. That's and some true. people are just trees. Some people I can't solve trees. that for them. So I just give them some tonality all over, and then I'm gonna use some highlights like this. Um, I'm using high key yellow, um, and I'm just putting on that texture. And then what I'll do is I'll use some inks and glazes to start really toning that down to get that wood texture feel to it so this in particular I'm just this is how I do wood or uh, textures like this got some hobby questions from chat um, would you recommend better use of a wet palette or a dry palette for this yeah and what and what uh, paint brush size would you also recommend um, I'm currently using a size one or two I don't know what I have in my mouth. I have a one. Yeah, I'm using a one and a two. Or maybe it's two twos. I don't even two know. Two twos. You don't even know. The important part is not really the size. It's the it's the tip. Yeah. So like, you want a good tip and a fat belly. <laughs> so that's that's a good paintbrush. Um, you want like this is the belly. The little, that part right there. But you want a fat belly and a thin tip that's controllable. The belly gives a reservoir and lets the paint stay workable longer. If you have no belly, uh, the paint dries out very quick. So like this brush here, this is a size one. Like this is just what I use to paint eyes. I drag it across my thumb. I sharpen that brush, get a nice fine tip. And then I just barely touch. And that's how I paint eyes. For this, also what I'm doing is dragging it flat across to create, like, see a blade? See how that's a blade shape? So what I can do with that is then I can just drag it across and get real fine lines to get that wood texture on there. Or like the edge there. Boop. Boop, boop, boop. Is Groot on a 50 or 65? He's on a 50. Mm -hmm. And do we have any recommendations for a good airbrush? It 
<laughs> I don't know what this noise means. Um, I think it kind of depends what you want, but there's a lot of there's a lot of good starters out there. So um, the uh, Awada Eclipse is a great one that you can find in a lot of places. The Badger 105 Patriot is a really yeah. great starter. Um, the Neo from Awada is an even cheaper like starter option. It kind of depends on what you want. If you're just looking to like do priming and base coating, something like that will definitely work. I mean, there's there's a ton of options. There's just so many options. I'm currently using the Patriot 105 for a lot of stuff, but I don't get into like real crazy airbrushing. I, I just use it for like base coats, you know, or priming because, you know, there's nothing worse than going outside to prime something with a rattle can and it just turns the chalk or it's always raining or it's always raining here <laughs> so but yeah i think you know there's there's a lot of great there's a lot of great options and it just kind of comes down to what you're looking for um, but any of the kind of the starter brand models from you know some of those companies like awada or badger are probably going to work out really well yeah. for people yeah and both companies are really great. They have a lot of good support. Obviously, a lot of people use their products, so you're going to be able to find tons of videos and advice on how to get the best out of them and when you troubleshoot and stuff because, like, airbrushes are finicky creatures. They clog and do weird things, and you, you spend plenty of time, like, trying to figure out why you're not getting <laughs> the same results you got yesterday. And then, of course, compressors, but compressors are easy. You pretty much get any compressor at all. And that was how, how are you thinking of tackling the flow on group? Um, I, 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 I painted one group and I did the orange glow. I might do something different here. I feel like I need to be going fast. I'm not going to paint the whole thing. You know what? I'm just going to paint the front so we can get further along. Ooh, look at him go. That way people can see some more You can see the progress yeah. rather than just the brown. So I was like, oh, look, you put yellow on the brown. Good job, guy. You're the best. Another question. Can you guys explain the process of wet blends? <gasps> wet blends? Yeah. We can. Who's going to do it, though? Paper, rock, scissors? Oh, it don't matter. We can both talk about it. Wet blending is simply like just smashing two wet paints together. Yep. Like, let's do a little bit on the back. I got a spot. Do you have a spot? I, I got a spot. I got, I got a tiny raccoon. You have a tiny raccoon? I could do it on the rocks, I suppose. That would work pretty well. But yeah, the, the effectively wet blending is just mixing the paint on the miniature. So you get your paints nice and like thin down. I've done it on several Here, I'm um, gonna do it right videos. Here, right shoulder. In the past, too, if you want more examples of it, like I did it for the Loki that we painted not too long ago. Um, did a little wet blending on Star-Lord. But as you'll see, Dallas is just going to take the paint. He's going to put it on the miniature. And then before that paint has a chance to dry, he's going to take his next color, the color that he wants to highlight with, and he's just going to smash them together. And that's going to allow him to like basically mix these gradients on the miniature itself. So it's a really fun, it's a really fun technique that you can totally lose yourself in. A little green in there. Um, because it's really forgiving. Like As long as you keep your paints not super thick, and you make sure to use like a medium or something to make sure that they're going to stay wet because you need them to stay wet obviously for a lot longer than normal with this technique you can work them and you can work them to death it's pretty awesome and you can just keep going back and forth and mushing more paint in and mushing more paint in until you're like happy with the results yep you just keep working just keep adding the color where you want it and you get it blended together that's the basic idea you can also do some of this good thing we didn't decide or good thing we decided not paint the whole thing it's like say I want like a little bit of that a little bit of that and then like I like to use a clean brush a second clean brush kind of pull that paint together to kind of create a gradient this is very dramatic 
Um, I'd probably put a different color in between the two of those, but that's the basic idea is like you're just kind of using that brush to kind of pull those together and create your gradient. And then you can also go back and you can be like, I want that line a little sharper white. <coughs> so you just clean it up. Maybe put a little texture in there. A little highlight on this side. You can even blend that together like that. There you go. That makes sense? You get really dramatic effects and you can blend two very, very different colors together like that. You're just mashing them together. It's a lot of fun, especially on big flat surfaces mm -hmm. or like getting like um, something like, you know, like this tree man here, you know, this group, you kind of want to create like so, just some tonality to get things started. You just kind of mash a bunch of colors together so you can get some highs and some lows. And that was how you painted your first group, right? When we were oh, at PAX wow. Unplugged, it was all basically wet blend. Yeah, I just mashed colors together. See, and now I'm going to use a little yellow. And I'm going to, this is yellow ink, the, what is it called? Uh, ink Tense Ochre. And I'm going to go over that. What this is going to do is tone everything together. So I got that kind of cohesive feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. It's another really good technique to do if you want to make something look really glowy because you can use the the shade color and your really bright poppy like white or your super brought, burnt out highlight and you can kind of just mash them together until they get that right effect. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to correct if you go too far one way or the other. Even this, I can go back and I can add some colors to this. I just want to get some of this yellow on here. Maybe I want to grab a little blue, maybe a little green. I'm going to start working in the shadows. There's a brown ink over there too, I believe. If you, uh, when you got a stopping point. I thought I gave you the brown ink. No. No, I do not have a brown ink. I have a chestnut and I have a wood. Wood. That's great. And it makes sense. It does. So much sense. So I can mix a little blue and a little of this wood, a little yellow. I'm mixing all kinds of colors over here. And I yeah. can start working that into like some shadows. That's one of the cool things about only having to paint one of something. You can mix to your heart's content. And you don't have to go back five years later and figure out how you did figure it. Figure out what you did, yeah. No matching required. So like here, I'm just putting some wood ink and blue ink in the shadows. I'm going to go pretty dramatic here just for speed. And now I'm using a second brush and dragging it forward and just keeping it in the recess and just kind of mashing it in there. But I'm trying to keep it off the raised areas of the wood. See how dramatic that makes that? Certainly. <laughs> Thanks for the positive feedback, Josh. I forgot it was an answer. I guess I typed it fixed. Need a little more brown. I'm not mocking you. I was laughing at you. It's different. Hmm. Mocking you would have been something like, certainly. That's that. See? See the difference? 
Okay. Well, so next time, maybe before you go around accusing people of doing things they didn't do, you can think about it. You can consider, Josh. How, how do you think that makes me feel? <laughs> Being blamed for something that I didn't even do. It's harsh, man. You just come around and like, make people feel bad? Why you got to be that way? We're getting asked the difference between uh, an ink and paint and when you should use them. Woo, that's a good question. An ink is a highly pigmented, very thin uh, paint. Like paint is a very generic term. Um, and when you should use it, um, it depends. It's technique, right? It's like it's it's thin, so you can't do a base coat. Um, I like to use it to increase uh, increase um, like. Um, the vibrancy because you can put an ink inside a paint and increase its saturation because inks are very very saturated saturated is the amount of color basically so like the more yellow and the more red something is it's the more saturated desaturated is by adding so like when you uh, shade if you had black you're desaturating it and that's why it doesn't look as vibrant and like colorful or if you had white to highlight which is I don't like doing those two things it desaturates it um, that's why I like, so you, inks add vibrancy and saturation. Um, right now I'm using an ink as like sort of, kind of like a wash. Sort of. Sort of like you would use a wash. A wash is just a technique. Um, so you can ink, use inks to shade but keep saturation. Or glaze and keep saturation. There's all kinds of things. It's all, it's, it's all technique. It's not about the thing, it's about the technique. So, like washes, washes are not a thing. Washes are a technique. You can make anything into a wash. So, do we want to talk about the technique? I assume yes. Of course. So, a wash is just a technique where you use a thin paint to gather in the recesses to create contrast. Gather in recesses to create contrast. Mm -hmm. A glaze is a um, is like a tint. So like T I N, not T E N. Mm -hmm. um, where you're changing the color of an overall um, element, right? So think like a filter over a, over a light for photography. Inks are just paints that are very thin and highly pigmented. Washes is just a technique, not necessarily a product. So, when do you use an ink? I use an ink to increase saturation, to add to paints, to add vibrancy, or in this case, to make a sort of wash to increase all those things. I'm creating shadows, and I'm also increasing the vibrancy and um, saturation of the entire miniature. That's basically what, what we're doing here. So like, as you can see, I'm using these colors. I'm dropping them all over like a wash, but it's also increasing the, the vibrancy. It's not just creating the, the shadows inside the crevices. And then I kind of blend it away if I need to, if it's too much on top. And then by switching different colors, that was too blue. So I'm using a bunch of different colors to create overall interest on a very, you know, one monochromatic monochromatic creature, right? So I got yellows and blues and greens happening all over, and it makes it more visually interesting. It's kind of like well, it also makes it more natural. Like if you go look mm -hmm. at bark in in nature, it's not just brown or shades of brown. You've got, you know, you've got areas of green moss. Bark is actually a little more gray than it is brown. Like you have all these different variations and, and tonal shifts and stuff. And so doing those kind of subtly on your tree man, your Groot, um, will add to that whole feeling of like real world, natural tree. Like it's living, it gives it, it, gives it life. Yeah, it's, like a, it's like when I paint buildings. Um, we should probably do an episode on buildings. And yeah, we've only done like two so far. Oh 
should do more. Yeah. Like when you paint a building, like if you look at a wall, a wall is not just one color, but it also doesn't have like that high contrast light to dark like you would do on a miniature, even though you're doing a miniature building. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's mainly a tonal, it's like a bunch of different tones. So like if you look at the walls around you, you'll see yellows and blues and greens and mm -hmm. all these different colors. So it's kind of the same philosophy here. This is a large natural creature, so I want to create like a bunch of different colors for the visual interest. How's your rocket going? He's getting his orange jumpsuit, you know. While Dallas was talking about using inks as washes and stuff, I actually went through and used my own little ink conglomeration of some black and some brown ink to do um, some washing over his fur, which I had painted with brown gray, and then I did a little bit of rainy gray wet blend on the muscles and stuff. And then I just wanted to go back through and use the the ink wash to kind of kind of exactly what Dallas was saying like meld the two colors together make the blends a little smoother and then get into those crevices and make it nice and dark so now I'm giving him his orange jumper yay yeah. his little jumper his little jumper yeah his little raccoon jumper his his spaceman outfit this is a spaceman outfit for sure what is that old cosmonaut color? What does our eight, 80 viewers in chat think of our rocket and group? Oh, being painted oh is, that, is that what we're asking? Shake and Dallas so far. What do you guys think? They're just here. They're just loving it. They're loving it. Oh, we're after your color. What color are you using? I don't know. It's brown and blue and it's a little bit of everything all mixed together now. It's a hodgepodge. Yeah, it's great. I like the word hodgepodge. All right, Josh. Brass tacks. Who would win out a fight? Rocket Raccoon. Stop it. Oh, here we go. I'm so excited for this. Or Cosmo. Stop it. And we need to, inquiring minds need to know who's going to take that belt. I yeah, love see, when he takes the big breath. Here's the big breath. Here's the big breath. I knew I knew you'd have opinions on this. That's, uh, man. But like Cos like I'm not saying Cosmo's a pet, but I mean neither of them are technically pets. But, but, but Cosmo's more of a pet than Rocket Raccoon. Rocket Raccoon's a person, sir. That's what I'm saying. So is Cosmo. Well, I mean, but Cosmo is Oh, here we go. You gotta look over your like your hang ups about about dogs being pets and look at them more like peoples. I think Rocket would get the first, like, you know, he'd get the jump on in, you know. Yeah, Cosmo yeah. has telepathy, okay. So eventually he'd be able to, like, A, read Rocket's, you know, movements before they happen uh -huh. and possibly even mind control him. Do you think you can mind control a Rocket? I, I, think, like, I don't Cosmo, think you want to go in there. The Soviet cosmonaut dog Yeah. can, in fact, Probably be Rocket Raccoon. You think? think so. Oh, this is this is bold claims here. I don't know that I agree. I think Rocket has the edge. Primarily because I feel like like Are one. You Cosmo is a four pointer. <laughs> oh, is that where we're at? <laughs> is he yet another four pointer? Would you stop it for the chat so that they can understand the joke? Uh, every time that we're doing play test That's or we're doing like character true. design. That's not true. I'm being serious. This is not true. Every time. Um, we talk about a character. Josh always starts talking about how he needs to be four points. He or she or they need to be four points every time. It's like, yeah, but I, think, I really think this character, like this character clearly needs to be a four pointer. Like think of all the stuff they can do. Like Josh, not everyone in the world gets to be a four pointer. That's not, that's not how it works, man. If everybody's a four pointer, nobody's a four pointer, Josh. I, am, I, I, am, I, I pitch five pointers. You know, not really. Six pointers and occasional threes, but like yes. You, I don't think you've ever once pitched a three. I don't think it's ever gone below four. There was a, I, oof, this so, I hate this. There was a recent thing. Uh huh. There was a recent thing that I said should be a three, and flip with another recent thing that's a four. I don't remember yeah. this. Yeah. I do remember I that. This so much. I don't remember this. All I ever remember is Josh being like four. Make it a four. All they can, Why can't they both be four? The she chat, says. Chat is 
they're, and this was pretty clever, and they think, well, all they care about are how many points Rocket and Groot are. Oh. Which is their way of asking if we will bless them. Bless them? <laughs> wow. Wow. Reveals today. And I don't know, are, are, are they being... Do you guys feel they're being encouraging enough of your things, of your miniatures? Oh, oh I don't need to be bribed, Josh. I'm not like you. I don't, I don't need the bribery. This is your call, man. You're in charge here. We've, we've gone over this before. You're in charge. You have control. You just have to say the word. I brought the stuff in. You know, you know. I brought I'll the spoil, goods. You know, I brought I'll the goods. Anything. If you can remember it. If I can remember it. <laughs> I brought the goods, Josh, so they're here. I love spoiling stuff. I only don't spoil stuff because I'm not allowed to. I think once... I would be terrible at marketing because I would just let it all you out. You just let it all out? Yeah. Just can't handle the secrets? Oh, you're all great. You're that all... Yeah, that's great. You're sucking up to chat, Dallas, just being like, oh, if it was up to me... Look at you laughing over there. If it was up to me... Yeah. It's not up to me. It's up to me and Josh. Look, man. You're the one who's going to get mad. We don't want to spoil your plans. We know that you have you have a master plan. You got it all figured out. It's fine. Machiavellian. No, not Machiavellian. I'm pretty sure I'm using that word right. I don't think so. Well. Not everything is Machiavellian. People are loving the mossiness on Groot. He's very mossy. Mm -hmm. <gasps> I want to even darken the back even further. I want to kick it up. Where's that black ink? Yes! Oh, gosh. Oh, you just knocked over your rock. Almost. We were almost there. Disaster averted, though. Now, let's just darken this hole like that. Yes! Do I need to stop painting, Josh? I think when you have a natural lull, go ahead and begin showing off. Yes, oh. we're showing off the cards today. What? What? Yes. What? 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 Cards. You know, they're going to start to expect this every stream I, if you I, keep doing it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Turn off your microphone. I have some choice words for you right now. Mm. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's like I told you, though. We always have stuff. We'll never run out. It's not how it works. Mm -mm -mm. Now I'm just going to, like, really take my time on this orange, yeah, though. just take your time with that orange. Take my time. Chat's loving it. Chat's loving you. They really want you to keep painting. They're really loving. First of all, it's rude. To take your time. They should, they should just... This is what they came for. They came for the relaxing, like... The relaxing paint jam. Just so they know, I do read the comments afterwards, so. <laughs> Don't think that you're anonymous out there. <laughs> oh, I hear Pagani yelling about the dance party at our neighbors are having. He'll be. I know. I just, I just like to mark when they have their dance parties. All right, I guess I'll stop with this super sweet orange jumper. It's happening. Is it's it? Happening. You know, I'm supposed to be able to get things painted on this stream, but for some reason. <laughs> yeah, what kind of stream is this anymore? What kind of stream are you oh. running here, Josh? What am I starting with? Uh, Character cards or or crisis cards? Or tactic cards, not crisis yeah, the cards. cards give context to, context to the character. So yeah, start with a rock. All right, hold on. So are you, you're not on me, right? No, hold on. Let me switch. All right, back and forth. All right, because so I got I to yeah, yeah, do this in a way that I'm not going to get yelled at. Yeah. Because they're very particular about this part. Shoop, 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 shoop. So, yep, that's good. Well, they got to take the tree shots, obviously. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you want to save this for posterity. Is that all too right. much glare? Should I? No, oh, that's no. too dark. No. How about that? No, Is like, that all right? We yeah, can read that? Yeah. All right. Oh, I'm sorry with Groot. Should, is that what should I, should I should do that? Yeah, Groot's fine. All right. 
I could switch it though. Like we could just change it. Let's give them what if I put Rocket up right now? Let's give them Groot. Oh, you click the button. All right, so Groot. So we have Groot. His alias is I am Groot, obviously. Um, stamina seven, he's uh, movement short. He's size three and he's threat three. He has four physical defense, two energy defense, and three mystic defense. So overall, a really, really hefty boy in terms of being a threat three with the seven uh, stamina and the four physical. Um, for Groot, like as we were working on it, we really wanted him to kind of represent the, um, the living plant, right? So he can take a lot of punishment. He has a regeneration system in place with one of his superpowers. So he's very much able to like weather the storm, take a lot of damage and keep going. Uh, as far as attacks go, he has a strike. It's range 2, strength 5, power cost 0. After the attack is resolved, this character gains power equal to the damage dealt. It's pretty straightforward. Nothing super flashy. Um, his big attack is I am Groot. Uh, I is am Groot. Exact, it's more angry, though. you got to get really angry with it. Oh. I am Groot. There you go. Perfect. Uh, range 2, strength 8. So ni nice, nice and hefty. Um, power cost 6, though. Before damage is dealt, this character may throw the target character medium. There is no size restriction on this. So what? if you happen to be size five someday, if that ever happens, uh, Groot's gonna throw you, cause he's real mad. And he's gonna throw you medium, which is like all the way ever. And then after this attack is resolved, the target character gains the stagger special condition. So this attack takes a while for Groot to build up to, unless he's taking a lot of damage, but when he gets there, it's gonna hurt. And I've watched this thing obliterate pretty much everybody. And if you can somehow figure out a way to get two of them off in a turn, it's pretty hard, requires some tactic cards and a little bit of like full powered Groot, um, you're gonna wind up really loving life. But otherwise, one of them, super good. Uh, you'll notice he doesn't have a ton of superpowers. We wanted, again, to kind of emphasize the fact that Groot has a role to play, especially with Rocket, but primarily what he's there for is he soaks damage um, he sees out some pretty strong uh, close range attacks. And this is the big one, Living Plant. So Living Plant is power cost two, it's active. Remove three damage from this character. So for two power, you're gonna remove three damage. Uh, those out there who are playing the game will know that if you take three damage, you gain three power. So you're gonna gain, uh, for spending two of those, you're gonna get all of your damage removed and you're still gonna have a power left over to build up for that I am Groot. Um, so this makes him extremely durable, extremely tanky. You can take a lot of damage. As long as your opponent isn't really focusing fire on him, he's going to be able to regenerate that damage and come back. And you also notice that it's not a once per turn ability. So if you have four power on you and you have six damage, you can certainly do it twice and remove six damage. Um, so again, Groot is something that you really have to decide. I'm going to daze him or KO him. Because if you don't, he's going to living plant or he's going to I am Groot and you're really going to regret it. And then his last superpower is another active power, it's Tangling Vines. Uh, you choose an enemy character within range three, it gains the Root Special Condition. So the Root Special Condition is listed in the uh, core rules. Um, I'm probably gonna get it wrong, but effectively you are forced to, uh, I think, spend extra power. I don't have the rules in front of me, I really should have checked this. But uh, it's in there, go look. I'm sure somebody in the chat is like, this is what it does, and that's great. Um, I think it's you spend extra power for uh, using an active or reactive superpower. And then we flip to his backside. Oh, and he's got blue tack all over himself, so now we're gonna take a minute. No, not my card. There. Uh, you'll notice that uh, nothing changes. He's literally the same lovable living plant that he was on the front side. So still Sam and a seven. All of the defenses are the same, same superpowers. So Groot is a three-point tank. Like, he is just going to take damage and absorb it like a sponge regenerate all the damage you give him, and keep coming at you. Or sit on his point and be really hard to remove. So that is Mr. I Am Groot. Now let's go to his, his buddy, his pal, his good friend, Rocket Raccoon. So Rocket Raccoon, uh, he's gonna be stamina three. He is movement medium. He's size one, so he's our first little, little guy. Um, he is threat two. His physical defense is two, his energy defense is two, and his mystic defense is three. So you can already tell he is not exceptionally durable. Um, he's really hard to see because he's size one, so he can hide really easily, uh, but he is not here to take a hit. He is, however, here to deal out all the damage to, ever. To, to give a hit. He is here to give the hits. 
Um, plasma Rifle is a range 5, strength 5, energy attack. Its power costs 0. After the attack is resolved, this character gains damage equal or power equal to the damage dealt. So super good. Range 5 is incredible. One of the few characters to have a range 5 attack. And at strength 5, this thing really does good work. Um, we move on to his next attack, which is Hadron Enforcer. This is, again, range 5, so it shoots forever. Um, it is strength 7 and power cost 4. It has the wild ability Vortex. So Vortex reads, before damage is dealt, other enemy characters within range 2 of the target character suffer 1 damage and are pushed towards the target character short. So this pairs exceptionally well if you've got a Thor who wants to do another area attack. If you have beam attacks, um, he can really kind of manipulate, pull people off of points. Uh, it's a really powerful tool to kind of mess with your opponent's plans and their positioning and stuff, as well as deal a significant amount of damage from super downtown to whatever you're shooting. Now, Rocket may not be the best at taking a punch, but he's pretty clever about not ever putting himself in that position. Um, his first superpower is reactive. It is called Booby Traps. It's power cost three. When an enemy character ends a movement within range three of this character, this character may use the superpower. Roll four dice. The enemy character suffers one damage for each wild and crit rolled. Um, so this makes moving into Rocket's engagement area a little dangerous, especially when he has power on him. He can effectively daze a character if he gets really lucky before they can actually do anything else. So you have to kind of play around this. You have to know that booby traps is definitely an option when it comes to Mr. Rocket Raccoon. The next reactive superpower is the one that we kind of talked about a little bit. So again, it was important that these characters be completely usable by themselves and have their own roles to fill. Rocket being an exceptionally good range turret, whereas Groot is an amazing damage like tank. Um, but we wanted to make sure that playing them together felt right, that you were really incentivized to want to take these two characters together and that they, they felt like they had the bond that we see in the comics so much. So personal bodyguard is kind of the representation of this. It's a free reactive superpower. It says when this character is the target of an attack and an allied Groot is within range one of this character, you may use this superpower. The allied Groot becomes the target of the, attack, of the attack regardless of range and line of sight. So as long as Rocket and Groot are within range one of each other, Rocket will never have to fear anything. Groot will always be able to take the attack for Rocket and keep Rocket going as he's blasting the opponent with all kinds of plasma and hadron enforcer goodness. And then the last superpower that Rocket has is an innate power. It's called Small Stature. It is this character always benefits from cover. So despite his defenses being rather low, he's always going to benefit from that cover bonus, which means he's always going to get to flip one of his results to a success when he's defending. Um, so it can make him a bit more durable combined with the booby traps. And of course, if he's paired with Groot, um, way more as well. One of the classic moves is to just park him behind a car and watch as the opponent goes, well, I gotta get rid of the car before I can actually shoot Rocket. Um, so, you know, again, Rocket is somebody kind of like Groot, you have to plan around. You have to decide, am I gonna go after him? And then you have to commit to it. Once you do, Rocket is likely to fall down really quick. And that's kind of what we wanted out of him, like this super like glass cannon um, where he just hits really hard, but the second that you start to like pay attention to him, he's probably gonna like fold in days. Flip over to his side. And the only thing that happens is his gun gets ruined, but otherwise he's the exact same Rocket Raccoon. Uh, same stamina, same attack, same defenses, same superpowers. Uh, so a really, um, a really fun two-point character because he's really focused on dealing out an inordinate amount of damage. Um, and so he can do a lot of work as long as your opponent like, either doesn't go after him or you put him in the right positions. Um, but he will fold pretty quick to any kind of like focused attacks. So that is Rocket and Groot. They come with two tactic cards. Which one should I do first? Dealer's choice. Dealer's choice. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just just tell the chat to pick right or left, and the first person says something. Doesn't matter. Maybe I won't show the other one, and we'll make it interesting, so they actually care. Right or left, chat. <laughs> right. Right. All right. So our first one is Deadly Duo. So this one is our kind of team up card for Rocket and Groot. Um, again, we really wanted to play off the idea that these two are an effective team together and we kind of want to incentivize that whole like you're going to take them and have fun. I love the art on this. It's super vibrant, super like 90s inspired, like so, it's just so cool. Um, very fun. All right, so what does it do? It is unaffiliated, so you can use it with any affiliation. It is an active superpower. It says during Rocket Raccoon's activation, if he is within range two of an allied Groot, both characters may spend two power each to play this card. Rocket Raccoon may immediately perform up to three plasma rifle attacks. Each attack must, tar must target a different enemy character. 
So I want to note that nowhere in here does this cost an action. So you can just go ahead and shoot to your heart's content. This is rocket being rocket, loving life and just blasting away. Um, so again, just an incentive, one that you're definitely going to want to take if you're taking these two characters. Um, you combine this with Starly's winging it ability, and all of a sudden you're making all the attacks ever, and you can reroll two dice on any of those attacks when you need to. Um, just a, a super, like, again, Rocket is a turret, Groot is his bodyguard. These two is what they do. Uh, and just a fun way to kind of show their kind of relationship in the comics and, and all of that stuff in the stories. So the second card you're going to get is We Are Groot. Um, another really great piece, super vibrant, colorful. You see that our poor, our poor squad, our crisis team of Captain America, Gamora, and Hulk has all been kind of knocked down. There's a, there's a mole near there, so I assume Thor has been knocked out too, and Groot now is forced to tend to his friends. Um, so We Are Groot is unaffiliated. It is an active card. It simply says that Groot may spend three power to play this card. Groot and allied characters within range four of him remove two damage. So this is like a super patch up. You can only do it with Groot, but when you do it, um, for three power, you're going to heal two damage from every ally, including Groot, within range four. And range four is almost the world. It's not quite range five, but it's real good. Um, so again, this is a card that if you're going to take Groot, it's really good. It's really good. Combine that with his living plant ability, and like Groot's almost never going to go down, and he can make sure that his um, allies definitely can stay in the fight a lot longer. Um, so a really effective kind of way to utilize Groot as kind of a support character. And that was, again, another one of our thoughts um, when, when looking at Groot. So Groot also pairs well with Sacrifice, the tactic card that allows him to take a hit for another character um, because of that damage absorption. Of course, Rocket Raccoon loves one-two punch. Anything to make his attacks more powerful. It's pretty amazing. Um, but that is Rocket and Groot. So a really fun and effective kind of combo for a two and a three we kind of looked at them as like, what would a five cost character of the two combined be? And then we split those up and basically gave them kind of abilities that let them fulfill a specific role and uh, really let them specialize so that we could get these kind of fun characters. Um, super fun in the Guardians of the Galaxy affiliation. They do a lot of great things um, and play well with Star-Lord's leadership. And of course, the other cards that we showed on the last stream, like Crew of the Milano being able to remove special conditions. When you only have three health and you want to make all the attacks in the world, being bled is not exactly cool. Stun is obviously a really bad one for Groot. Um, so Crew of the Milano is a huge boon to them to be able to get rid of those conditions without having to sacrifice their, their action economy in the game. Fantastic. So both Star-Lord and Rocket and Groot will be available on March 13th. Yep. They will kick off the Guardians of the Galaxy. Really awesome little pair so that you can start playing Guardians affiliation right away. And uh, I'm sure we'll be doing more on there their teammates here in the next couple of weeks as we get closer to April. Chad seems really excited about Rocket and Groot, particularly old Groot's healing he, he He's a sponge, like he doesn't, he, doesn't, he just absorbs damage. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Dallas just stole all my colors. Like I got, I got no paints left anymore. That's not true. Took them all. Apparently he's telling me I'm done painting for the day. I think Josh is done until we're done painting. So rude. I don't know, are you Josh? Are we done painting for the day? You got a few minutes. Are you ending this? You got a few minutes. I don't know what to do with my few minutes. I probably should wash this orange. Is there a good orange wash over there? I want to do what you did to me. I got, no. No, there's no good right orange there. wash? Yellow ink, red ink, orange ink. All right. Just glaze it. Just glaze it. I need, I need something to go into the darkness too. Add a little bit more red. Oh, add a little touch. The tiny, so blue is the most powerful color. I don't it's know if you know. It's the super color. It is, it's a super color. Blue is the strongest color. So the tiniest amount of blue, you can get purple. But you have to be spraying. You have to like really, really control what you're doing. Is it with, with great blue comes great responsibility? Yeah. Got it. Not everybody can wield the power of blue. Oh, the power of blue. I like it. He's got little nodes. Does he? What color did you go with the nodes? Uh, yellows. Oh, I thought you were going to do something different. I thought I was, but... 
It looks, it looks too good. Change your mind. Yellow, yellow does look really good against that brown, though. It really does. I don't blame you. Yeah. Yeehaw. Yeah. That filler. What? Josh knows. Josh knows. See, like the shadow. Kind of. Hmm. What darkness does lurk in the hearts of men, Josh? Mm. I was told you know. Mm. <laughs> that's that's all I'm getting. I'm getting a hmm. All right then. You keep your secrets. <laughs> hey, so like glossy a right now because it's something. So glossy from the inks. That's all right. He's got some shine. Apparently, as far as Chat's concerned, he's got a lot of shine. It is fun to play. That's true. Yeah, I'm very happy with where those two shook out. I like how they pair together, but also kind of fill roles. I mean, you take Rocket all the time and like all of your lists, I feel like you never take poor Groot. We're having a bit of a war on chat. Oh boy. It's like only you can solve shit. <gasps> only I can solve. Does Rocket lose cover if he, you attack him within range two? Uh, he does not. He always has cover. But Pagani can correct me if I'm wrong. That's how I remember it, and I suppose I could just like be like, that's just what it is. But yeah, you don't gain cover if somebody was in the range two of you. Being within range two does not negate cover, if I'm remembering the rule and how we finally wrote it correctly, because we had this discussion a lot internally as well. So if you just always have cover, you just always have cover. OP. OP. I mean, just because you're close to him doesn't mean him being small goes away. He's so small. He's so small. He's darty. It's not like magnifying something. I guess if somebody had a magnifying glass ability, maybe they could stop the cover. Kind of like the signal. <coughs> True. What else they got, Josh? Are they just are they just going? Pagani swore then as just answering a bunch of Yeah. Switches. Was I right? You Tell were me. Right. You I were was right. right? Yeah, that's what I thought. You were right. I should trust myself more. We should all trust ourselves more. It's true. It's true. But yeah. Are loving both of these minis. They love your wizened looking groove and they love your bright saucy rocket. Saucy! He is very saucy. Saucy rocket. Because he's got that Hadron Enforcer, that big old cannon. Sad I'm not going to get to paint the cannon on this stream. I was going to have fun with that. We want to make it glow. It was going to be great. I like the turquoise. So, Josh, thing. am I right in hearing that you're going to be a. Uh, you're going to be taking some of these characters to like to bat next week against like a Pagani. I'm pretty sure that's what I heard. What's going on next week? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that that might be accurate. Yeah. Say, that might be accurate to say. You might get to see these these minis in a game next week. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mine's done, so you can use it. While um, I think. Is it both of you are gone? Yeah, we're both gone. Yeah, we're we're going. We're flying back to home base. Mm -hmm. We're going. We're going to the Rosevilles for for next week. So I think like you and Pagugu, 
You're gonna you're gonna put it on the table. We're gonna have Guardians versus something. Oh, boy. you're the boss though, Josh. So what are you gonna take? Are you gonna take the Guardians or are you gonna take the something? What will he choose? I think for marketing purposes, it's probably best that the better player take the Guardians. See, I think you should take so the Guardians. So they actually get to do something. No, you should take the Guardians, man. Like I, I feel like I feel like you you take the Guardians. Pagani takes the something. And Pagani takes the something. Yeah, he takes the something. I wonder what the something is. Well, we don't know. I mean, the something could be anything. Could be a boat. Wait, we got boats? No. Oh. Did you make a boat? Not yet. No, we don't have a boat. The day you make it, we'll have it. Are you, is that permission to make a boat? That's not permission. That is just a statement of oh, fact. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That is just a statement of fact. Yeah. Marco, we need a boat. Marco's probably already done with it. All right, it's time to wrap it up. Oh, are we done now? But now what that, about these other cards we were going to spoil? Now that we threw <laughs> them under the bus. All right. Wow. That's just cruel. All right. I mean, I said we'll have things forever, but we don't actually have things forever. We're out of things to spoil now. Because that's all for the releases next month. There's more coming. <coughs> Uh, hang on, I'm painting my concrete. More soon. Are you literally done already? Yeah, dude. Jeez Louise. I'm so behind. It's so uncool. That's what happens when you get to be the spoiler. That's true. If you get to be the spoiler. Yeah, man. I'm just going to paint the base, and I'm going to clear coat it. I'm going to call it done, and then Josh can use it on stream next week. I like week. it. It's beautiful. It's yeah, beautiful. It's beautiful. You guys did great work. Beautiful. Beautiful. He's so grungy. He's very he's grungy. Colors. He's so different from your other Groot, who's so like bright and orange. I know that my other one's much more. He's like, very comic booky. This one feels very like angry. Rawr, Groot. This is this is rage Groot. Oh yeah, turn that off. Move that over. There Do we, we have any announcements to make before we go? I mean, I think I made it. Like you know, next week, tune in. Josh Cologne against William Pagani. A fight for the century. A battle of the decade. A clash of titans. You need some intro music. You do. Yeah. You do. A. Do you have one picked? No, I don't think. It has to go through licensing. It's true. It's a super-powered synaptic showdown for the ages. You'll buy the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. There you go. Perfect. It's always Thursday. It's always on Thursday. Thursday, 1 p.m. Watch the synaptic showdown of the century. Josh mm. Cologne <laughs> versus Will Pagani. Yeah. In a fight to determine... I don't really know nothing really. Like just for your entertainment, they're simply battling for your entertainment. Are you not entertained? Exactly. You wanted this, His so we delivered. Went out. Like he, yeah, he's just like, Aah. are you not entertained? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're gonna be seeing the guardians on the table for the first time uh -huh. against something. Against something. We don't know who's taking control of who I yet. I feel like if I was out there in the audience, I'd be like, I feel like it's gonna be I a feel, surprise. I feel it's like you should open this. You should open this to a vote. You should open this to a vote. Oh. That's what you should do. This is not a democracy. <laughs> yeah, you should open to a vote. You should open to a vote who plays what. Who plays what. Oh, God. They, they want someone to play Black Order. Like, no, no. See, they're getting clever. <laughs> they're getting clever. No, not a vote on here. you got to open to a vote, like, on, on the social media. I'm not going to vote. <laughs> no, not an open vote. you got to give them choices, like an A or a B. <laughs> uh, who plays Guardians? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who plays yeah. Guardians? Oh, my God. I, I don't know. I don't think anyone cares. Oh, they do. They do. They do. They do. They do. I think they want to see you screaming, I am Groot a lot. That's what I, I would I want. Am, That's I what I would Groot. want in my life. That is true. I know. All right, take us out. Take Remember, us out. March 13th. March 13th. Star-Lord, Rocket, Groot, coming yep. to a friendly local game store near you. Um, next week, join for the showdown of a century of the synaptic mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, crew mm -hmm, of the... Mm -hmm. Synonymous cinnamons. The claustrophobic, cataclysmic, climactic, synaptic showdown. Synaptic showdown. Yeah. There you go. Boom. 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 So check us out on social media. Atomic Mass on the... Uh, AtomicMassGames.com? That one. Yeah, that's a good one. That and has, the Instagram. Yeah, we're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah, yeah, Those yeah. Those are all yeah. there. 
for your latest news and information on everything Marvel Crisis Protocol and Atomic Mass Games. Uh, and so until next time. Take care, guys. Thank you for joining us. We will see you on the next one. Goodbye. Bye-bye. You're going to miss us next week when we're... We'll, you are going to miss us. You're going to be like... What are you going to do? What are you going to do without us, Josh? Uh, you're so grumpy right now. Keep you you got to play a game next week. And